thank you, Andrew. I'm glad to be here today. Um, I think I have an interesting presentation. Uh, I'm going to jump right into things. We don't have a lot of time. We're trying to, to move things along this morning. So I have an interesting set of topics that I would like to cover with you today. And, and the first one is something that I think may be controversial, and that is the idea that uh, uh, cloud computing is killing open source. So we'll talk about that first, and maybe you'll throw things, maybe you'll not. We'll see where that gets. Uh, uh, then I want to talk about the next generation of uh, uh, applications, in particular uh, what I call cloud application providers, how are taking advantage of that cloud uh, and how this relates to open source. And then finally, uh, uh, a call to action around cloud service providers and that we need cloud service providers to open up. So we'll get there. So let's, let's, let's hit on this first topic. Uh, cloud computing is killing open source. And I, I don't know if any of you have seen this, this, this message that's appeared out there. Um, uh, you know, doom and gloom for open source because of the cloud. Uh, the failure of commercial open source software. Even Gartner has said this. Gartner came out, and of course we all know that if Gartner says it, it must be true, right? Uh, Gartner has come out and said, you know, cloud computing is, is, is it killing open source? And, you know, part of the theme here is that, uh, the angle of this is that cloud computing is easy to use. And part of the appeal of open source was this low cost, ease of use. And now this new shiny object has come along low cost, ease of use in cloud computing, and the people are turning their attention there. So I've seen this gloom, uh, doom and gloom, and I, I, you know, I thought I would take a look at it a little bit more in depth and see what uh, was really happening here. So, because I'm, I'm very curious, I've been in open source now 20 years of my career, and if it's dying, I ought to find out, so. Um, so the first thing we did was, I don't notice that, So um, I, I don't know if you, if you realize this, Google has a, uh, a feature called Google Insights. And Google Insights lets you uh, take various search terms in Google and see how they trend over time, okay? And this is software as a service, which is related to, to cloud computing, an important piece of that. And you can see here that, that software as a service has been uh, trending slightly up over this, the time period of this, which goes back to uh, 2004 can see in this chart. So, so you can see there, yeah, interest in software as a service has been going up a bit, not steeply. But we overlay onto that cloud computing, and you can see here where cloud computing has really taken off. Uh, you know, that barrier is the beginning of 2008, really shooting up to the point where cloud computing is, uh, uh, you know, having a significant, uh, you know, three quarters, half to three quarters of the interest of software as a service. So cloud computing is taking off there. But then I looked and said, okay, well, you know, what's happening in open source? And, you know, obviously everyone's talking about cloud computing. How does that relate to in SaaS? How does that relate to open source? Well, we overlaid open source on top of this. And as you can see, open source, the, the number of people who search on open source declining a little bit over time. But I view that as, as open source is becoming ubiquitous, as, as you know, Matt Aslett told us earlier. Uh, and you can see that the interest in open source is actually running more than four times the uh, interest in cloud computing uh, and SaaS. So obviously this isn't you know, the death of open source and, and cloud computing isn't killing it here. And, and the, the interest in open source is actually much stronger than the interest in cloud computing and SaaS, according to Google. So that was the, the, the first sort of chart we looked at. Um, the next thing is, uh, I took a look at the cloud service providers. And I said, okay, what are cloud service providers running? So we, we took a look at, you know, Amazon, Rackspace, GoGrid, you know, Google, Google's uh, hosting platform. And well, guess what, you know, they're built on Linux, and ZenSource and Hadoop and Apache and open source. So the cloud service providers are all running open source, built on open source and enabled open source. The bottom line here is that open source is what's enabling the cloud and it always has been. We would not have cloud computing today were it not for open source. 
if those cloud service providers had to license um, all of that software to build out the cloud, they never would have been able to build out those cloud computing resources. Amazon, who provisions now, what, 30,000 VMs a day? That's the latest number I've seen. Would never have been able to build out that kind of service if they would have had to figure out licensing behind it. So the cloud has been created and enabled by open source. And further, what are people running on those clouds? They're running open source overwhelmingly. We went and took a look at um, what kinds of VMs were being provisioned on Amazon. Amazon, you may know, has the ability to provision a Windows virtual machine. It costs you a little bit more because baked into that provisioning price is a license fee, right? Well, this is the ratio. Over 90% of virtual machines provisioned on Amazon are running Linux. Open source is the platform of choice here in, uh, in cloud computing. Uh, it, it's interesting, it's sort of the, the, uh, the opposite of the market share that Microsoft had on uh, the desktop in many years. The cloud is, is uh, where open source is succeeding. In fact, I would argue for you that cloud services are increasing the demand for open source software. So contrary to the cloud killing open source, I think the cloud is causing open source to grow. Okay? It's making it easier to run software because of the availability of cloud services. So the bottom line, cloud, cloud, uh, cloud computing is not killing open source. In fact, it's enabling and growing open source. The opposite of that. So let me step through um, uh, uh, what I think this also means in terms of a generational change in, in applications. Cloud applications and software and service applications in the past were built out on custom hosted uh, infrastructure. When the first generation of software as a service appeared, when you could first deliver an application in the web browser, there were not all of these variations of cloud service providers available. You had to build their own infrastructure, and those first generation of application providers did. But today, what's happening, those, those vendors only ran on their infrastructure. But with the availability of a wide variety of cloud services today, those application uh, uh, providers are now running on all of these cloud and a variety of these clouds. And that portability across, across the cloud, I think, becomes a key aspect and a key element of the next generation of application, uh, of application providers, cloud app providers. What you see here is this portability and ability to run on every cloud, I think, becomes a key attribute. And open source apps are leading there. And you can see good set of these, these apps. This is the next generation of what it means to be software in the cloud and software in the service. If you take the cloud, which is easy to provision, put that together with open source, easy to acquire, and we end up with more use of open source software. Finally, the one issue that we have to worry about with the cloud is lock-in to cloud service providers. One of the benefits of open source is no vendor lock-in. That ability for the customer to, to go a variety of places for support and service to move their data and applications around. Well, the cloud is not open source, but the cloud, in order to be successful here, needs to be open in the same way as that open source is open in terms of that portability and the ability of customers to move their, to own their data, move their data around, and run their applications anywhere. Well, the problem has been acknowledged, and I don't have time to drill into it today, but there are two things, two, two efforts that I would encourage you to look at there. Uh, the first is simplecloud.org. This is an initiative spearhead, spearheaded by Zen and PHP to create a common set of cloud APIs, in particular across uh, PHP for the LAMP stack to enable application portability across clouds. That's one step there. The other, uh, the other effort is this uh, 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 called the Open Cloud Manifesto. Uh, 
a whole series of companies, including uh, IBM, Sun, a variety of others, have stepped up to this and tried to define what it means for a cloud service provider to be open and for applications to be portable across cloud service providers. We need to, we need to, we need to keep an eye on this. We need to follow on this. We can't have the cloud service providers lock us in so that applications are not portable. That will defeat the whole purpose here. So with that, um, Sugar CRM, I just want to tell you, has been a, a beneficiary of this open and successful um, uh, portability story. And I'm just going to flip through here. Uh, this is the, the, uh, a map of all the running instances of Sugar CRM across Europe. Uh, we've had a fantastic uh, uh, growth here. And uh, you can see here, you know, we, we're filling in all of Europe with running Sugar CRM instances. So we're excited about that. And I'm going to leave, uh, uh, you know, the final conclusions here. Um, cloud computing is depending on open source. It's enabling open source. We're building the next generation of, of apps to take advantage of the cloud computing. We have to, we have to track and keep, keep an eye on these cloud service providers and make sure that platform is open. So thank you, and I think I'll turn things back to Andrew.